Yo, what is up guys? This is Kevin Paradox and you're watching another edition of Ask a Paradox where I answer all your dance related questions and give you tips and advice based on my 19 years of experience in freestyle dance. For this topic, we are going to focus on everything that is wrong with your dance, which is absolutely nothing. So let's get into it. Throughout the years, I've had a lot of students or people who are just uh, looking at my dance video asking me for advice on their dance. And a lot of times the same question occurs and that is, hey, what is wrong with my dance? And though I understand the question, I understand what it means. What you're asking is, hey, what can I improve? What can I change? Um, for me, the biggest and most important thing in dance is mindset. In any art form, it's all about mindset. Right now we live in a very social media driven uh, culture, a very social media driven time. And because of that, I feel like uh, artists are more focused, especially young artists and new upcoming artists are more focused on doing something right as opposed to doing something that is true to yourself. And what I mean by that is that we have so many examples of other artists, of other people that we follow, that we see, that we maybe look up to online that it's really difficult to find a new way or our own way of doing things and it's easier to rather just follow along with what we have seen already because that apparently works you know what i'm saying so in this video i want to address the importance of a healthy mindset inside of an artist inside of dance inside of any art form that we are doing and actually inside of life so this video might seem very cliche and very cheesy but it's so important and I can't stress it enough that the way we think, the way our mindset is, is the way we are going to express ourselves. And that if I set up my mindset in the right way, I give my body as a dancer, my body the freedom to, I guess, learn important things about myself. If I am not here to make mistakes, I am not here to grow, you know? And that's so cheesy and so overused, but then also not used at all. I myself come from a battle scene where um, it's all about beating your opponent, being quote unquote better than your opponent and showing the audience and showing the uh, judges that I am the one who is deservant of this win, which is a lot of fun. But the way I speak to you and the way I say it, you already notice that it's also a bit crooked because in this, it is really hard to express yourself Honestly, it is as if I have to fake my way to the top every time. Maybe I don't have a good day. Maybe I don't feel like battling, then I just don't participate. I know, but this is the platform that I have. These are my people. This is the only place where I know to express myself and am able to connect with people. Besides that, of course, we have the ciphers and we can jam and whatever, but I have a story to tell and I want to tell it. However, if my story is not based on wanting to beat the other person, now it becomes a very difficult situation. I know that I can't beat you. I'm not good enough yet to beat you. And maybe I really don't care about it, but I still want to dance. And in that moment, the mindset and understanding why you are there, why you are performing, why you are dancing and why you are sharing is extremely important. Because if you don't have a mindset for yourself, you're going to fall for the mindset of another. And that's just a waste of time, especially in art. Now, later on in the video, I am going to talk about a few pointers that you could look for in your own dance to see where you could progress uh, in your dance. These are not only physical pointers, these are gonna be different types of pointers that some people might overlook because dance, art, has more than just the movement, right? If it was just movement, it was kind of easy because all I have to do is practice movement. But there's a reason why I look different than another person does. And figuring out those reasons and the reason to why your body moves in this way might eventually help you to find ways to, I guess, progress as a dancer other than having to learn new moves. So look out for that. But first, let's talk about this mindset. Now, I myself am far from perfect and I am struggling with my mindset day in, day out because of my health, because of uh my status uh multiple things that are difficult to deal with and i can sometimes get lost in and sometimes i have to check myself so it's not something that i want to tell you from a higher place to a lower place like oh yo you got to do this to become better not at all i'm actually just explaining you my personal experience 
and that through changing my mindset in my experience i started to notice that i enjoyed myself more my dance became more real my dance became more vibrant and i gave myself the room to actually improve way better than i would have done if i would have stuck to a certain mindset that blocks me from actually growing and that mindset is that you have to be good in order to express yourself that's crazy that's absolutely crazy for me the first part of dance the first part of artistic expression in any form is about expressing yourself the way you are not the way you want to be the way you want to be will come eventually but the way you are right now is who you are you might be sad angry happy uh shy or very outspoken whatever it is you're gonna have to express that person as opposed to trying to um, act out a different person that you are not right now. You can do that, of course. Sometimes in a battle, that's what needed and it's fun. It's called a character. But when it comes to actually progressing as a human being, as a person inside of your art form, in my opinion, it's really important to connect those dots, to connect your personal life with your dance. And that means that it's okay to sometimes have shitty days. It's okay to have a dancer's block. It's okay to not be able to do certain things and be better at other things. That's human. That's how you should be. And that's also what makes it extremely beautiful. If dance was a huge painting, I don't want to see red painted all over the painting. I want to see the different colors, the different bigger spots, smaller spots, and so on. You are one of those spots. And I want to see you. Who cares what I want? We want to see you. The culture wants to see you. You eventually should want to see you. So how? How do we get off of this negative mindset of thinking that we always have to be better uh, in order to be happy? Because that's kind of what it's about, right? There's a few things that I uh, not use myself, but a few things that I always keep in mind that sort of help me to keep myself in check there where it's needed. One of the things is that I take a lot of inspiration from other art forms and I look at a lot of other art uh, because they created the path already. You know, there are art forms that are way older than hip hop, for instance, that have been going through the same things we have been going through way longer than us. And to see how they have developed and what has been created inside of that sometimes really helps me to become at ease and say, oh, you know, I go through this right now. But when I look at them and I look how they are doing it, this is possible too. For instance, in painting, you have... Um, realistic painters, you have abstract painters, uh, you have people who are focused more on the message of the painting and people who like the beauty of the painting more, right? And for me, it was really interesting to see that there is a place for everybody, a place and time. For instance, I remember that Picasso uh, changed the way he was painting throughout his life, you know? And people are very scared for change in dance. We tend to really want to stick to what we're good at, because you know that's what we're known for or that's what we want to be known for and that's okay that's a way but as i started seeing what impact picasso had throughout his life and how from realistic to abstract to uh, more blue colors and a more dark vibe to then a more happy vibe he expressed different personalities different sides of his personality in his art and when i saw this i understood that okay if I am in a certain phase, I have to express that phase and not fake and act like it's not there. If I am not feeling well, I am going to express that because that is the reality and that's how I'm going to be the closest to uh, my potential as an artist. And that is something that you really shouldn't be afraid of and you should really embrace change because change will always and forever happen. It is not possible to have something the same forever. So, you know, Go along with whatever your life is going into because eventually these changes will keep on happening and your body will have ups and downs. And if you understand and really focus on the bigger picture of those ups and downs, you will understand that even in your downs, you will be able to talk to somebody different. In your ups, maybe you'll talk to somebody different. I am happy and I can inspire people to be happy, but when I'm sad, but I'm brave enough to express it, Maybe I can get other people outside of this energy, outside of this feeling to express as well. And then all of a sudden, 
even though I am in a down period, well, I am able to share something great with other people. So even if you feel that you're not the best dancer, you don't have to be. It's not about how good you dance, but how good you express it, right? How honest are you with that stuff? And that's gonna help you. There's a lot of um, very famous dancers who are not technically the best and most skilled dancers, you know? And that is okay because there is a path and is a place for everybody. And as long as you stay real to yourself, you'll fall into place wherever you need to be. Another thing that really has helped me to keep my mindset healthy is always trying to see the bigger picture. It's kind of the same thing I just talked about, but I just wanted to address it a little bit more. I'll give you an example. Um, I remember that the first time I participated in a very big battle called Summer Dance Forever, uh, I think I participated in 2011 and I was nowhere near ready to participate in such a battle. I didn't have any foundation. Uh, I didn't have a lot of technique skills. Um, all I have is just my expression. However, I just went, I was like, all right, let's do this. I really want to do this, so let's go. I went and it was not the best experience because as I uh, was dancing, for some weird reason, I decided to do a backflip. And for some weird reason, I almost fell on my face. And this was in front of a lot of famous or well-known dancers. Everybody was there basically. And I, first time showing myself, I fell on my face. Super awkward, really funny now, but back then, oh my gosh, I was dying. I was dying. So the next year, I was like, yo, what should I do? Should I participate? I was a lot better next year. Uh, I, I trained a lot, so um, luckily, you know, I really got, I got a little stronger with my dance. And I said, okay, this is my dream. I really want to do this, but I don't feel like I'm ready. However, imagine that I have this huge bag of L's, losses, L's, 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 L's. And that before I can finally achieve a W, a win, I have to first get all these L's out of this bag and take all of these losses, take all of these, I guess, failures, right? To get to this W. I can either wait and say I'm not ready yet, so I'm gonna just wait until I think it's my time. Or I can start to try and scrape off these L's, these losses, because what do I really have to lose if I take this loss right now? as a man and I take it that's one loss that i have experienced and can grow from if i'm gonna wait till later maybe that l is still gonna be there maybe the l is gonna be a little bit smaller but it's gonna be there and i'm still gonna have to take that loss and then i wasted a whole freaking year just to get that l so i said i'm just gonna go and i'm gonna fall on my face again i'm gonna do this i'm not gonna do another backflip that's not what i meant i meant figure of speech i'm gonna fall on my face <laughs> Uh, yeah, I said I'm gonna follow my face again. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna take this L right now so that I can grow from it I'm not gonna be scared of who I am right now And I'm gonna express it so that I know that I can grow from that. I went I participated and oh snap I made it through the pre-selections. I actually tell, told this story before but that was a long time ago so I'm gonna just continue telling this story and uh, I didn't expect to get through the pre-selection so I was like oh my gosh now the L is going to be bigger other people would have been happy I wasn't I was like oh snap they gonna kill me no so yeah I was I battled against uh, Jimmy which is a good friend of mine now um, and uh, I ended up winning the first round I was like okay but I'm not ready yet guys why are you letting me win this I'm not ready just telling you like hey this is gonna go wrong I'm gonna lose soon Next round, I win again. Yo, bro, listen, uh, you know, I'm not ready. And then I ended up battling uh, a very big inspiration of my junior boogie. And it was an amazing experience for me. It was not just an amazing experience. After that, I got invited to be a battle guest for a Sergi Original Floor. I think it was also in 2012. And from there, I started becoming a battle guest in more places. The funny thing is, and the moral of the story is, I was only looking at the bigger picture and not at who I was in that moment. I said to myself, I am going to just fall on my face right now, 
because I know that in the future it's going to help me. But I didn't know that it was going to help me that soon. So it's really about seeing the bigger picture and knowing that whatever you do right now in this moment is okay because this is not the last moment. <laughs> Definitely not, not even close. There's so many more moments that are going to come. So take this moment and take this L because eventually that L is going to turn into a dog. Yes. My last piece of advice for the mindset before we go into uh, some other things that you could look out for when it comes to practicing your dance and checking out how you can grow or can improve uh, is that you should really treat yourself the way you are treating anyone else. If you're treating other people. Good. Yeah. And what I mean by that is this. Let's say there would be this kid coming up to you and saying to you like, yo, I really want to become a good dancer. Um, but I feel like I'm doing everything wrong. What should I do? Blah, 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 blah. The advice that you would give to other people, you should give to yourself and listen to yourself as well, always. I've learned so much from teaching other people by just listening to the words that came out of my mouth and actually regurgitating them back to myself. And what happened is I started growing from not only practice, but growing from understanding how I was treating other people and how I was seeing other people's dance. Now, of course, if your mindset for other people's dance is a little bit crooked, it might be crooked for yourself too. And that's a good lesson because maybe you need to learn to be more open to other people in that sense. But let's say you have a little brother or a student or whoever, and he comes to you crying and says, yo, I think I'm whack, what should I do? Whatever heartfelt advice you would give to that person is the same heartfelt advice and the same love you should give to yourself as an artist and that maybe sounds cheesy or maybe you don't understand what i'm talking about but it's really important that you give yourself the self-love and the room to make the mistakes to improve and to be flawed we do not want flawless artists it's useless because if you would have flawless artists everyone would be around the same we need people who are real, you know, that's what inspires us. Someone who is real and who you see go from a certain place to another place and they rise to a certain peak because that's what is amazing about it, to see someone rise to the occasion. And you can do the same as long as you give yourself the room to actually express yourself and then improve from that point on. And that is something that I had to become okay with myself as well. Uh, it was really difficult for me at first to not, after I would dance anywhere, right away go into the Man, that was whack. Nah, that was really bad. Nah, you liked it? Nah, bro, that was trash. Which is not needed at all, because that moment is just a moment. I can't change it. So if you can't change that moment, why still feed into it? You know what I'm saying? Let it be that moment. There is such a beauty in understanding that that moment is never coming back. And that that moment was there only to exist in that point of time and that now it's gone forever. That's beautiful. That means that every moment is very special. Every weak moment is special. Every strong moment is special. And to understand that it's just a moment as opposed to your whole life, you know, is going to really help you to um, accept certain times and accept certain things. And of course, you want to practice, of course, you want to become better, of course, you want to grow as a dancer, learn more, uh, know more about the history, get more technical skills, uh, express yourself better, be less shy, of course. But it all comes down to one thing. Your mindset is going to help you to take all these aspects of the dance and implement them into your dance more in a more healthy way as opposed to forcing it onto yourself. So what are some things that we can look out for as a dancer that might help us grow and that we have overlooked? So in my previous uh, Ask Paradox, I did already talk about the body, the mind, the soul, right? And these three to me are very important because it's often overlooked. We often only focus on the skill, the technique, the physical side. And when we look at our dance, we say physically, we don't like what is happening. But the thing is physical skill just takes time, patience, an efficient practice and maybe I'm gonna do an ask a paradox about how to practice efficiently because that is also really really helpful if you know how to practice so that your body soaks up the information properly it's easier for you to grow uh, 
faster basically. But besides your technique, there are so many other things that you can look out for that can really help you to improve as a dancer. For instance, um, when we talk about the body, you have your flexibility, you have your strength, and you have your coordination, right? So looking at your body and asking yourself, hey, how strong are my legs? Can I be in certain positions? Am I able to be flexible enough to do certain things? Can, I guess, bring you to awareness that maybe you need to work more on your flexibility or the strength of your core, your arms, your legs. If you have a hard time with floor work, core, arms are very important. If you have a hard time with fast footwork, maybe you should work on the strength of your uh, legs, right, of your calves. So many things. Uh, and that's, those are things that, you know, not everybody talks about because we only focus on the dancing part, which is really important. But hey, having a physical body that is ready for whatever you want to accomplish that can help you to get to the next level is very useful. Another thing that you could look out for is the mindset, like I said, right? Is my mindset helping me forward? Is it healthy for me to work this way or think this way? Am I um, aware of how I'm practicing? How is my mind working when I practice and do the movements? Is it with me? Uh, am I lost in whatever I am doing? Uh, am I conscious of the movement that is happening? There's so many things, right? Actually, coordination also has a lot to do with the mindset. Uh, muscle memory, which is muscle memory. So, you know, it's, it's linked and that is really important as well. If there is a disconnection between your body and your mind and you are not focused, for instance, on the movement that is happening, yeah, of course it's going to take a long time for you to get better because your body is just moving but you're not soaking up the feelings of the movement. You're not soaking up all that information that is happening. You're not regurgitating the movement that comes in inside of your mind and then bringing it back into the body so to accomplish a different way of doing it. And that is really important or at least really useful. And then with the soul, the emotional expression, the feeling, right? I did talk about this already but you know, it's always good to re-talk about it, to go over it again, right? With the soul, it's it's sometimes people tend to shove away their real emotions in dance, right? Sometimes uh, we are overwhelmed by our emotions, right? So some people are low on emotional expression and other people are very high on emotional expression because of that maybe the physical body is not capable of sharing, you know, those moments through the body and then maybe I need to focus more on my technique so that I can actually express my emotion better through technique or maybe I need to up my emotion and stop working on technique the whole time stop working on steps stop working on dance maybe it's time or not working on dance but just technical dance maybe it's time for me to play a song that hits home really deep or maybe it's time for me to not even play a song but just go and talk to somebody and really express my feelings so that I become used to that, right? This dance thing is to me very deep. To me, it's 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 very special and very intricate. To me, dance is literally life, but an expressed in motion, you know? And that means that there is a lot to it. It's not as simple as one, two, three, in my personal opinion. Of course, for some people it is, and that's okay because just like in life, you have different types of people. And to figure out how your life fits into your dance is really going to help you to progress, not technically always, but especially as a human being inside of art. And that's literally what it's all about. So hopefully these pointers help you and maybe make you see some, re-see something that you have forgotten or see something in a different light that you haven't thought of yet. Um, I'm just here to give my, I guess, perspective and my experience through dance and hopefully that is helping you guys. And if that's the case, it would be really awesome for you guys to like this video and just let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, are there things that you have been going through yourself that uh, I shed a certain light on? Or maybe you have another question. Please, if you have any questions, just ask them below here. Uh, I'm going to look into the questions and I'm going to use them for the next Ask a Paradox so that I can really talk to you guys in more depth as opposed to with the fingers. With that said, I really hope that this video helped you guys out. 
I want to thank you for watching the whole video all the way to the end. Um, I'm posting a lot of dance videos right now because I've been traveling for the past two months. So don't forget to put on that notification bell because otherwise you might miss the next videos that I'm going to post. I'll see you guys in the next video and I really want to thank you. Peace out.